Hey guys, welcome to Chickenlandia. It's a beautiful autumn day here in the Pacific Northwest. I am very busy with something. It's a surprise. And I'm gonna to talk to you about it in a few minutes. But first, let's talk about rescuing the chicken. Stop it! Stop it, Lee! No! Stop attacking me! He attacked me again! You're lucky you're little. He is so lucky. I need to spruce up the coop. I need to spruce up the chicken yard. Lots of work to do today. This is Noli. Noli was in my TEDx talk. If you get a chance to check that out, Noli makes an appearance at the very end. She's a good chicken. You guys know little Kiki. She is my sweet, sweet, sweet rescue chicken. I got Kiki from the Humane Society last year. I got her, I got Beast another little Sarama, and I got double chicken. <laughs> They're all great little birds. They didn't have the best life before they came to Chickenlandia, but I was able to rescue them and bring them here, and they've been pecking and scratching ever since. I am putting a all natural treatment that is supposed to help with internal parasites, and I am putting that into their feed right now. I cannot open these. This is so embarrassing. There we go. I didn't start out rescuing chickens. My first flock was a batch of baby chicks and that was super fun. So I totally get it. I totally get the draw to want to get baby chicks and I'm not against that. I really feel like just because you're for something doesn't mean you have to be against something else for the most part, depending on what it is. And a lot of the people that I teach in my classes, that's what they do. They go to the farm store, they get baby chicks. And I know that that's super fun. And that means less chickens being raised in factory farms, which I think is a good thing. So I wanted to show you guys something I do in the fall. I actually don't spread their treats around on the ground in the fall because it is parasite season. And I talked about that a lot in my last video. I will put the link to that in my description. What I do in the fall is I put their treats into small dishes and I put those on the ground so they can have them. You know, if I spread it on the ground, then there's poop on the ground and there might be critters that are carrying uh, parasites, internal parasites on the ground. I don't want that. So I'll show you what I do. They're having some clicking good grubs. <laughs> Yummy. There's poop in my coop. So I'm just going to talk to you guys while I'm scraping poop. <laughs> so I am really lucky because our Humane Society actually rescues farm animals, and that includes chickens, ducks other types of poultry, turkey, definitely like goats, even cows and horses. They really work hard to just be that resource for our community and I'm very grateful to them. They are the Whatcom Humane Society. I know that some areas don't have rescues that take in farm animals, but there usually is some type of resource for you to find rescue chickens. And another thing to consider is not necessarily going, you know, getting rescue chickens from a rescue organization like the Humane Society, but just buying hens that are already grown. And there's a lot of benefits to that. You get to skip that part where they're in the brooder and, you know, it can be really dusty if it's in your house. You have to use a, some type of heat source, which could be a fire hazard, depending on what you're using. I really like skipping that part of it now. I love baby chicks, but it's so much easier to adopt grown hens or even pullets that are ready to go into lay very soon. That is a toupee that just laid an egg. <laughs> I don't even remember where I got her, but I know I got her as an adult. 
Pretty sure it was a rescue situation. Most of my chickens are rescues. So obviously when you bring an adult chicken home, especially if it's a rescue chicken that maybe came from not great circumstances, they're gonna need a little bit of extra care and patience. There is something that I use every time I rescue a duck or chicken. It is called Rescue Remedy. Rescue Remedy is a Bach flower remedy and it says on it natural stress relief. What this is is it kind of works like a homeopathic works. It really works on an energetic level. I really like it and because I am also into homeopathics this is just right up my alley. I add it to everyone's water not just the new chickens water or the new ducks water but everybody's water because whenever a new chicken or a duck comes into a, a flock, it's a little bit of a disruption. I try to help with some of that by just giving them a little bit of stress relief in their water. And this is human grade, this is for humans. There is a pet one, but I use the human one and I can take this too if I'm stressing out. <laughs> I do use homeopathics with my chickens and a great homeopathic that everybody should have is called Aconite. You can get these at your local health food store. Usually they will have it. This is a 30C potency, which is just fine for your chickens. What I will do is I will give this to the new chicken. I'll just put one pellet in their water and that will be enough to help them. So what aconite is great for is shock or sudden change. It's good to give it to them right when they get here, maybe for the first couple days just put it, a pellet of it in their water and that will help them to adjust to all the changes and the big shock that is occurring. Oh gosh, Philippe. Okay, Philippe, that is it. Hold on, I gotta get him. Philippe is not a rescue chicken. I got Philippe as a baby to keep another rescue baby company. He's a little stinker. It's a good thing he doesn't even have spurs. You don't even have spurs. People ask me all the time, why do you keep that rooster? I love him. It is always best to bring more than one chicken into the flock. And the reason is, is that it's really hard. That integration process is hard on a chicken. If you only bring one chicken into a flock, then that one chicken has to endure all the chasing and the pecking and figuring out the pecking order and it's tough. If you have more than one chicken then they can kind of share that burden. I've got another video that's all about integrating bantam chickens into a flock that has standard size hens. It was quite the process but you can use that process on any size chicken. I just wanted to show that you could bring itty bitty tiny chickens into a flock of standard hens if you did it really slowly and patiently and I will also put that video link in the description. Should I just bring you inside and put a diaper on you? <laughs> I don't think you'd go for that. I cannot tell you how rewarding it is to bring a chicken into Chickenlandia and maybe they're not in the best condition. They maybe had problems of some kind, health problems, they didn't have anywhere to live and I just see them blossom into their own little wonderful personalities. Some more wonderful than others. <laughs>have a surprise. Chickenlandia has a new member. Right now he's just a foster but uh, we're hoping to possibly keep him if it all works out. We really want it to work out. It really just depends on how he does. Now if you follow me on Twitter or Facebook or Instagram then you know that I not only have a flock of chickens and ducks, I have a flock of dogs. <laughs> A couple days ago, I saw a post on Facebook from a rescue that I follow. It's a Sholowitz Quintley rescue. Say that 10 times fast, Sholowitz Quintley. We have two Sholowitz Quintley Chihuahua mixes and then one purebred Sholowitz Quintley and we also have a toy poodle. Unfortunately, there was someone who had become very ill and could no longer care for their dog. This person was in Portland. The first man, my husband, got in a car, drove all the way down to Portland from Bellingham, Washington. That's four hours, eight hours total. And he picked up this little dog. 
I don't want to put my camera in his face because he's really, really scared right now. So I'm not going to do that to him, but here's a picture of him. I have definitely been giving him rescue remedy along with some other homeopathics that have been prescribed by our family homeopath. Hey guys, I'm actually inside my house. I just got an email from the rescue and they were checking out his medical records for me and they found out that this is the sixth home that this little dog has lived in in his seven years of life. So he has been through a lot. He is really scared. I don't blame him. We are going to do everything we can for him and hopefully he can stay here. I really want him to stay here because I don't want him to have to go to another home. He's underneath that little blanket. He does not want to come out. That's it. I really hope it works and I will keep you updated.